Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney presents a comprehensive national response plan for COVID-19. Stakeholders join forces to combat illegal dumping at the Pigeon Island Causeway. Babano Primary School's literary talent shines. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. St. Lucia and the rest of the Caribbean region continues to monitor the global developments of the COVID-19 virus. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney called an emergency meeting with the National Emergency Management Advisory Committee, NEMAC, on Friday, 28 February 2020, to brief stakeholders of the disaster management landscape on the ongoing national response to safeguard against the arrival of the virus on our shores. As we hear from Lisa Joseph, the government is making every resource available to protect the nation, including considering commissioning the Owen King EU Hospital ahead of schedule. Representatives from the private and public sectors attended the briefing on the government's response plan for the coronavirus, now referred to as COVID-19. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney, who chairs the National Emergency Management Advisory Committee, NEMAC, told stakeholders that COVID-19 has forced governments the world over to make tough decisions as the virus tests the capacity of countries to deal with the outbreak. For countries like St. Lucia with limited financial resources, funding the management of the coronavirus is costly, from purchasing personal protective equipment like face masks and gloves, which have seen tremendous increase in pricing, to creating quarantine areas and hospital bed space to accommodate hundreds or even thousands of patients at a time. Nonetheless, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney says government is leaving no stone unturned in beefing up Senusha's capacity for any eventuality. We do not have the ability to be able to test for corona currently on the island. Um, I have given the, the CMO and the Ministry of Health the green light to proceed to be able to, to bring equipment here that we can do that. Um, and there's two types, if I'm not mistaken. One is we can probably get some stuff in immediately where we can do singular testing, and then obviously a machine in which we can do the processing on bigger numbers. So I think we're attempting to be able to do both things at this point. Honorable Chassane informed that on Monday, March 2nd, 2020, the Cabinet of Ministers would be discussing advancing the commissioning date of the Owen King EU Hospital in order to free up Victoria Hospital for use as a respiratory center for COVID-19. Additionally, all necessary support is being given to frontline workers, namely nurses, fire service personnel, and police officers. Is to make sure that we give them and equip them with the things to give them the confidence to be able to do their job. And one is to explain to them what their potential exposure is and how we're going to facilitate it. This is why considering moving to OKU is a capacity issue because it means it frees up uh, Victoria to be a respiratory center. We're even sending a team to Rat Island because Rat Island for a long time was considered a place where we would put people in quarantine. It's still in the legislation. And it's still actually in the legislation. Given that the U.S., Canada, and countries in Latin America have reported cases of coronavirus, Prime Minister Chastney candidly noted that he cannot say that COVID-19 would not come to Senusha's shores. However, the country can prepare for it, and that means creating an environment that would limit the ability of the virus to spread. The cruise industry is reeling, um, and, and they're reeling because... There's just not a consistency. So, in fact, we're having a, a phone conversation today specifically with them as a region in terms of how we can address some of the, uh, the difficult decisions that we're having to, to be made and what we can do to minimize the risk on the ships in order for the countries to be able to facilitate the arrivals of those ships on a more regular basis. But up to now, the state has had to make a decision based on the information that it has and it has to it, the positions that we've taken are one of extreme caution several agencies and governmental organizations have already mobilized to create a covid-19 coordination committee 
the National Health Security Committee has also been activated. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. And as the coronavirus continues to remain an epidemic around the world, the Department of Health and Wellness is working assiduously to ensure the public are sensitized on ways to prevent the spread of an infection. More on this report from Funnel Neptune. Although St. Lucia has no confirmed cases of the coronavirus, the Department of Health and Wellness is calling on the public to take the necessary precautionary measures to prevent the spread of an infection. Health educator of the Bureau of Health Education, Nadesh Smith-Lambert, spoke on the standard recommendations an individual should practice to minimize the spread of an infection. So the Ministry of Health and Wellness would like to remind persons out there to remember as often as possible to wash your hands with running water and soap. In the event you do not have running water and soap, you could use hand sanitizer with an alcohol base of 60% and up. We would also like to remind persons that if you use tissue to sneeze or to cough, you should throw away the tissue into a bin. If you do not have tissue and you really need to sneeze or cough, you do it in your inner elbow. We would also like to remind persons that you could practice cleaning down your surfaces with um, a little disinfectant just to ensure that any viruses that are on the surfaces are gotten rid of. Smith Lambert also provided guidance on when and how should a person use a mask to control infection transmission. So a medical mask is not required for members of the general public who do not have any respiratory symptoms. You wear a mask if you are coughing or sneezing or if you are taking care of somebody who has respiratory symptoms such as coughing or sneezing. Um, masks are also only effective when used in the right way so you would also have to incorporate hand washing so you wash your hands with running water and soap the department of health and wellness encourages businesses and workplaces to ensure hand sanitizers are readily available and accessible to customers and employees reporting from the communications unit of the ministry of health and wellness i am Fennel neptune the National Conservation Authority, the NCA, on the morning of Saturday, 29 February 2020, joined partner agencies and businesses operating along the Pigeon Island Causeway in a massive cleanup exercise. A number of organizations collaborated efforts to channel their appreciation and pride in the community into a major cleanup initiative between the Robert Duvaux Drive and the Landings Resort and Spa. The aim was to address the dumping in the area, a practice that is not only unsightly to St. Lucians and visitors alike, but also illegal. The initiative was born out of an established Landings Environmental Committee. Executive Assistant at the Landings Resort and Spa and the co-chair of the Environmental Committee, Camille Huggins, said having conducted several cleanup initiatives along the same area, now is the time for action. In the past, we have also collaborated with the National Trust to do several cleanups but the fact that we have to do it so often means that there needs to be more awareness of what is happening here and the fact that it should not happen it is illegal it is an eyesore and we need to put a stop to it uh, the only other thing i wanted to add is we will be erecting cameras surveillance cameras cameras as well and the idea is we're going to as much as we're going to try and prevent the dumping, the illegal dumping. We also want the public to know that should, after all of this, they still continue to dump, there will be cameras strategically placed and located to catch the individuals and they will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. General Manager for the National Conservation Authority, Jacinta Lee, lamented the indiscriminate dumping of garbage in the area. Individuals were dumping not only household waste, but commercial waste as well. The general manager indicated that the litter wardens were instrumental in ensuring individuals refrained from such behavior. However, she noted that everyone should be responsible enough to dispose of their waste properly. They used to call them police, though the Castries was clean, a clean city. You throw a cigarette butt, you were charged. We need to bring back the litter wardens. We really need to, because if not, 
things will just get worse and worse and worse. There are so many national cleanups, so many community cleanups. Uh, that's not right. That's not right. If each person takes the responsibility, you know, that we, we wouldn't have to be taking our Saturdays to come around to clean up after people. You notice at the back there, and these are contractors that have been paid to dump garbage, and instead of going to, to the landfill, they just dump it there. That shouldn't happen. Commercial Services Officer at the National Conservation Authority, Lydia Cox, warned that the impact of indiscriminate dumping is far-reaching. Sometimes I think people have that notion that, look, we really want us to clean for guests, for tourists when they come to our country. But we forget that how it can have a negative impact on our lives and even the country's economy. Because if we continue to litter, then we can have the outbreak of, of diseases. It will put pressure on our health system. It will put pressure on the, on the country because the government will have to find money to deal with persons getting sick because of litter around the place. I want to employ solution. I want to please ask St. Lucians to let's have some national pride. Take away your waste. Your garbage is your responsibility. If you come to the beach, you have an activity, take your garbage, tie it up, put it, place it in your vehicle, take it with you and dispose of it properly. Heavy duty equipment was on site to dispose of the bulky commercial waste dumped on the causeway. Environment, Health and Safety Manager for Sanders Grand St. Lucian, Venetia Durant, explained that the initiative was a long time coming. We've been advocating for this for a while. We've had many cleanups. We've even taken on a project earlier this year. And if you look along the roadways, you would see some signs that we've erected just to help persons to know that, guess what, you don't need to dump your garbage here or you need to ensure that you keep the place clean. So we're all in on that. However, we have taken it a step further, and so I am very happy that we've joined forces with Landings as well as other NGOs, and the government has taken the initiative as well to ensure that we try to clean up this place because this is, this is the entrance to our national landmark, and we want to ensure that when persons come on this causeway that they feel a sense of pride. So it's a, a part of a step-by-step -step process to get involved in a beautification of the causeway, and we're happy that we're a part of it. A number of entities collaborated to make the cleanup a success, including the Landings Resort and Spa, National Conservation Authority, St. Lucia National Trust, St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, PKF, CLICO, Sanders Grand St. Lucian, and the Grosile Constituency Council. The cleanup campaign was six-pronged and included creating awareness through the use of the media networks, the cleaning up of the community in partnership with other organizations, clearing up of overgrown brush and the removal of trailers and empty containers, and the erection of signage, placing boulders along boundary lines and the installation of cameras and lighting, followed by a beautification undertaking. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And that was Mayor of the Grosley Constituency Council, James Edwin. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Les moun ki niti bi estene e ben tou se, moun ki an bon sante oli wain ka wespiwe se vemin la. Moun ki pani bon tepe waman kon sa ki ni maladi HIV, alcohol, kafime, ti mamay e gwa moun bien sensi pou se maladi sa la. Moun ki ka tou se ni pou pran pokosyon le yo an pami moun an plas publik. Kouve bouchou le oka estene e tou se. Visite dokter e ben plas sante yo. Fini tou tretman yo ba ou pou sa jwen djewizon e pi maladi tibi. An responsabilite ou, ede dou bout Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome everyone to your segment from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The 2020 Under-19 Interschools Male and Female Volleyball Tournaments organized by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will serve off this week. Contesting among the males are Soufre Comprehensive Secondary, Shrizel Secondary, Castries Comprehensive, St. Mary's College, Leonhes Comprehensive, Cicero Secondary, and Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. 
2020 female group comprises Sufre Comprehensive Secondary, Castries Comprehensive, Leon Hills Comprehensive, St. Joseph's Convent, and Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. The playing venues will be the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex and the Miku Community Court. Matches will be best of three competition format. Due to the number of teams registering, each category has only one group. At the end of round one, the first and second places for each category will advance automatically to the finals round for the gold medal or the 2020 male and female championships. In the opening round of men's matches, Tuesday, March 3, 2020, Castries Comprehensive takes on Cicero Secondary, whilst Arthur Lewis Community College plays against St. Mary's College at the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex. In female competition, Wednesday, March 4, 2020, St. Joseph's Convent comes up against Leonis Comprehensive at 1 p.m. and at 2 p.m. Sufre Comprehensive takes on Castries Comprehensive also at the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, has emphasized government's intention to continue its decentralization policy as far as facilities are concerned, with the ultimate aim of seeing the further advancement of sporting success by St. Lucian sportsmen and women. Minister Estefan made the remarks recently while welcoming home a five-member swim team that competed successfully at the Ioana Swimming Cup held in Lima, Peru. What we want to do is to decentralize sports, not just swimming, but all the different sports, and have facilities around the island, okay? Whether it's east, north, west, south, and we are planning to have, we are planning to have a pool in, on the east coast. We are also planning to put one in the south, and in the west and and all of you know that there is a 50 meter pole coming in grozile so this is going to decentralize the spots and make it very 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 big and this is going to bring even more success to the swimming federation and if that we have come to the end of your segment from youth development and sports for today i'm ryan o'brien Thanks, Ryan. Babano Primary School showed its literary talents at the third annual poetry recital competition for schools within the Babano constituency. The Babano constituency has, for the last three years, engaged its student population in poetry recital competitions at the primary school level. The competition seeks to foster self-expression, self-confidence, and a number of other skills which will prepare these students for life. This year, the competition took on new meaning when students at the secondary school level performed. We stand in unity for our sweet set this year, fighting tooth and nail for our nation's prosperity. With a purpose of our time, togetherness forever on our mind. We plead for infinite unity, for this is the time. At the helm of our passion is the health of our nation. Seeds sown from segregations destroyed. Our people unite, our love deployed. We work together in spirit and mind, for this is the time. Addressing the gathering was the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, who is also the parliamentary representative for the Babano constituency, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph. He says events like this serves as an opportunity to expose the talent of those within the constituency. The mere fact that you have agreed to participate, you are a winner. Because not many of us have the courage to come on stage and to perform. And if I can say, um, based on our past two experiences, Babono has a lot of talent. Babano Primary shone brightly at Sunday's event, capturing first place and third place. Fonso Primary took the second place prize. Vive la Rose, vive la Margaret. Roll it a wool, shake the shak shak, and live in the St. Lucia spirit. Home of sandy beaches, twin peters, and the driving volcano. Blessed with the sweet zook, 
solo ek mi zi kuduro. The music to which we dance with a slow rhyme, quadrille, or joke. One day in sweet St. Lucia, and I promise you will forever be hooked. Why, 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 why? Girl, some may see you as just another, but to me, you are like no other. Your lush green forest take my breath away. That's why I want to be with you night and day. Sir Arthur Lewis and Sir Derek Walcott, two Nobel laureates we adore. But I'm sure right here in St. Lucia, there are about 24 more. 24 Nobel laureates! Unbelievable, I know. The writer on the island who just need to ask for you. Let's invest in our country. All for one and one for all. Thriving in our independence. A new tooth for us. A new Last year's competition was won by the Balata Primary School. The competition forms part of St. Lucia's 41st Independence Anniversary celebrations. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. How do I decide which telecommunications service provider to use? When choosing a mobile, landline, cable TV and internet service provider or changing the one you currently use, here's what you should think about in order to get the best service to meet your needs. Why do I need the service? What is the quality of service offered? What are the rates? Are there hidden charges? How much can I afford to pay for the service? What are the customer service obligations of the provider? Not satisfied with the service? The choice is yours whether or not to use the service. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquia. Merci, Dr. Nisha. Merci, Madame, Department of Kinewes Consabilité, where Pharmacy and Gouvernement of the GIS. Asume pi Televisión Nacional pi a NTN, kapuzato novela akweol. Kapuzato, Primus Hutchinson. Apa mi segun aktivite pute celebre kawante anivose edipadas setlisi. Sete yo ceremoni pute onwe les ambasade de bon volante ki gouvernement ja apwete pou wepozate setlisi anot pi. Gwan afe sala, sete Presentation officielle cette fois-ci des médailles de l'or pour l'honneur et excellence pour ces ambassadeurs. Si vous êtes en ministère des Affaires touristiques, donnez l'invité. Vous remarquez que le programme des ambassadeurs qui a assisté à tout ni effort et qui marche cette fois-ci à un pays international. Selon l'invité, le gouvernement cette fois-ci, en bas du département de culture et industrie de Koyati, cherche une façon pour poser attention à ce secteur de Koyati PIA et à la Fondation de Développement Culture, à ce CDF, programme des ambassadeurs, vini en réalité. Vite dit aussi, programme des ambassadeurs, c'est une initiative pour encourager ces lycéens à brasser plus fort passion, à ces passions, pour l'avantage de l'économie et pour encourager yo pour retourner service et support pour payer ces lycéens. Ministre des Affaires Culture et Industrie de Kuyati, Honorable Fortuna Belrose, Moutoué de Gwe Appreciation pour ces ambassadeurs sala pour qu'à supporter l'initiative là. Madame Belrose dit que c'est l'esprit qui sa yo établi qu'il suive à la bonne direction et qu'il nécessite l'intérêt de la jeunesse pour faire contribution aux nations à la différente façon. Ces ambassadeurs de bonne volonté qui ont été en position de la jeunesse pour faire contribution aux nations à la différente façon. Ces ambassadeurs de bonne volonté pour trois années, pour commencer, et aussi qu'à y trouver un passeport diplomatique qui a apporté le gouvernement général cette fois-ci. C'est l'ambassadeur cette fois-ci qui a apporté le thème là, à présent, qu'on les grandes excellences, et qui aussi 
Ronald Bohingson, Gordon Williams, Jermin Defoe, Darren Sami, Sir Leslie Ferdinand, Jalim Yurevic, Joseph Marcel, David Williams, Eken Chitoli. Municipal Rose declare that the ambassador Sala can represent the Pepsi to see that the plus haut honneur et j'ai fait plus haut à contribution pour payer à parmi eux ces sept lycées qui gouvernent l'honneur Grammy, l'honneur des musiques et cinéma olympique et grand champion de sport les professeurs à parmi plusieurs autres. Et quand une société c'est faut nous embrasser et célébrer tout. Objectif pour gomme des ambassadeurs c'est pour servir quand une façon pour cette transformation des affaires économiques et social à tout secteur à cette ci son moni ça c'est son moni ça là te pour cou j'ai dit passé maître l'école avec les instructeurs officier éducation les résidents bodis et représentatif pour parlement pour babono ça c'est honorable Ezekiel Joseph te semblé à la cour l'école premier bodis à babono pour te célébrer grand la victoire les étudiants qui pour former à l'examination comme un entrance l'année passée. L'école Premier Bodis trouvait deuxième place à parmi toute l'école qui écrit l'examination ça là au lieu cette ici. Maître l'école là, madame Marina Julian Joseph déclare que pour ces 4 8 l'année depuis l'école Bodis a existence, il est très plein et a jauté pour trouver deuxième place car enregistré 73.33%. Selon madame Joseph Raison pour ça, c'est parce que yo pas qu'à placer et forcément à solution académique, mais qu'à engager comme une et pas un excédentier à diverses activités comme sport, programme social à parmi d'autres. Officier d'éducation pour l'école en Paris Babono, Cyrus Sipal, félicité ces quatre étudiants qui vous suivent succès à l'examination comme un intrus là et qui conseille pour programme éducation PIA poser plus attention à sous chaque étudiant monsieur Sipal by assurance là qui qui c'est seulement né ces étudiants qui peuvent former en degré qui mérité captain pour gain cricket west indies à balage 19 ans qui c'est un résident bodis et que c'était un étudiant à l'école bodis qui m'a animé lieux et courager ces étudiants pour continuer pour travailler web parce que c'est seulement né yo ca réussir qui peut mettre pour continuer pour participer dans activité à commune bodis point de développement à diverses façons ces quatre étudiants qui ont l'homme fantastic four c'est seul quatre étudiants hors de col bodis qui étaient trouvés sélectés pour écrire l'examination comme un entrance et qui ont tout trouvé la victoire yo c'est Zavi John qui à St Mary's College Karu Karu pa de Queen qui à l'école secondaire Cas Castres Comprehensive Isaiah Louis qui à l'école secondaire Leonès et Adora Abraham qui à l'école secondaire Corinth. En parlant de ça, mon positif pour Babono Onewab Ezekiel Joseph était très excité pour succès qui l'école Bodjis trouvé selon Onewab Joseph, c'est l'école là en Babono qui a continué pour performer à d'un haut degré tout bonnement. Devant grand cérémonie pour honorer quatre étudiants à l'école là et pour célébrer grand la victoire côté l'école là enregistré deuxième place en parmi toute l'école qui écrit l'examination comme une chose l'année passée en cette ici représentatif Ezekiel Joseph déclare que ça qui a fait plus plaisir c'est bonne l'école là et puis c'est pour monsieur Sayo Sipal qui officier de éducation c'est instituteur association les parents et instituteur et et puis les les mêmes qu'on représentatif corporé pour voir que l'école là ça c'est si l'école là pour cela continue fait succès selon représentatif Joseph c'est pas seulement programme académique mais programme social sport et l'intérêt les parents à travailler les enfants qui ont l'école là représentatif Babonoa aussi parlé dit ces conseils qui il même ça c'est conseils qui mani Melius et qui même tenir pour ces quatre ces quatre étudiants qui ont le mains fantastique fort avec les étudiants à l'école Premier Bodjis et Tiema. Et puis moi, c'est Otan Kimani qui est sorti en, en, en Bogis, qui parlait de vous. Il dit que pour ça, c'est la vie. Vous ne pouvez pas travailler. 
ou pas que c'est pas quand elle est comme ça on est pour aller dehors là travailler ou être ni les quartiers ou en nord ou être focus et puis pas que les pièces l'autre bagarre distract parce que nous tout ça la mienne chez l'autre bagarre qui qui distract maman actuellement actuellement et puis c'est c'est puis pour ça moi dis que c'est nécessaire pour y ça c'est focus travailler et puis succès à y qu'il fait c'est pas uni pour pour comme ne pas pas pour moment pour y pour quoi y because they will find six people call who so only me feel complete marketable ek mise madam c'est comme ça nous pour nouvelle aujourd'hui là on va remercier autant pour gagader n'a pas rien mais ça si on pouche plus moi encore c'est dire comment ça fait la vie les gars pour cette autre nouvelle à quoi on la présent on va vivre pour cette autre niche merci au pil primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise Fair skies becoming cloudy at times with a few scattered showers. Light to moderate easterly winds generated by the Atlantic high pressure system will continue across the Eastern Caribbean region for the next few days. Patches of low level cloud drifting with the wind flow will bring some scattered showers over the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. Tides for Castries Harbor low at 3:51 p.m., high at 10:39 p.m. Tides for Viewport Bay low at 5.18 p.m., high at 11.46 p.m. Seas are slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 6.18 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.